So welcome back to Orchid House. I'm Olivier in Fort Lauderdale and today I wanted to talk about Cattleyas in general and, and what they are and, and how to take care of them. Uh, there's obviously the genus Cattleya but then you have all the other uh, genera in the same alliance and it's a very large group. Now those are New World Orchids so they basically grow in South and Central America. Uh, Cattleyas proper, the majority are in Brazil, but the rest, I mean, the whole group really uh, spans all of Central America and, and South America, maybe with the exception of Argentina and Chile. Uh, so these are uh, uh, sympoidal plants, so the opposite would be monopoidal, which means that they grow on one stem, that would be Vandas and Phalaenopsis. These ones grow sideways, they keep on growing new bulbs on the side of existing existing ones from a rhizome which is kind of a, uh, a conduit at the base if you will uh, the the trick so your old bulbs will never bloom again they only bloom once they will also never root again so you really have to be very gentle with your new growth because that's what sustains the survival of the plant it keeps on growing from from new new uh, growth now the old bulbs, they are usually, they start to deflating a little bit, they can be shriveled, but they still hold water and they, they help uh, sustain uh, the, the growth of the plant. I uh, made a video a while back about the importance of uh, rain showers. I want to insist again, so your, your leaves should be plump, your bulbs should be plump and back bulbs may be shriveled, but uh, try. I mean, uh, if you're going to have a, a big shower, your plant is not in the rain, or if it, it uh, if it is exposed to the rain, just try and, and and touch your plant beforehand, and then come after the strong shower. I mean, like uh, one day of, of constant watering, and then you'll see the difference. They plump up, and that's really what you want. So, if your plant is uh, the, the leaves are not plump, uh, you probably have a problem. You need you need to work on that. Okay, so. The other thing about uh, the Cattleya Alliance, all the flowers are going to come from the top of the bulb. Now there's two exceptions to my knowledge, there might be more but I doubt it. Uh, one is uh, Epidendrum Stamfordianum. Epidendrum is, is a very large group which is a member of the Cattleya Alliance. And so you have a growing spike here, right there. There's another one hiding here. And if you look, they really come all the way down there. I, I hope it's not too dark there, but all the way down at the base of, of uh, the bulbs, which is not typical of the Cattleya Alliance. Typically, all the, the flowers come from the top. Then you have Walkeriana. They happen to be in bloom right now. This one is kind of an oddball and, and, and can sometimes grow from the top of a bulb. But you see here, I have two new. Uh, spikes and they really grow from the base at first you think it might be a bulb this one here actually is not even uh, fat or plump or anything it's just uh, a straight spike but that's that's the other exception so, but, so typically if you're not familiar with cattleyas and you have something growing at the base well you can be assured this is a new bulb if you're looking for flowers you always have to look at the top of the bulb now in the Cattleya genus itself, you have two large groups. You have the unifoliates and the bifoliates. I don't have much experience with the unifoliates because I do not grow them. Don't ask me why. Uh, now, the unifoliates typically have very large flowers. They, are, they have these big flowers. There's few flowers. They don't have very strong substance. Uh, and the colors are typically more in the whites, the yellows and the purples. Uh, the bifoliates, so they have one, unifoliates means they have only one leaf at the top. The bifoliates have two or three leaves at the top. And uh, so those are the ones that I grow. They have a lot of flowers, but much smaller flowers. And uh, these flowers are very waxy and the colors are extremely saturated, which is what I like. Now, the bifoliates, I mean, all of these Cattleyas typically they have you can treat them the same way. The bifoliates, you, you have to be very careful about repotting because they're extremely sensitive to repotting at the wrong time. That's the best way to send them to heaven or to hell. Uh, but so basically in terms of watering, uh, that's a constant across uh, the board. These are typical 
epiphytes, they grow on trees in nature, the, the roots are exposed and so they, there's a strong shower, everything gets soaked and then they, the roots dry very quickly. So if they are not growing pots in nature, so inside the pot they can stay wet for a long time and that's a recipe for rot and then your, your plant is going is gonna to die. So you really have to observe the dry and wet cycle for cattleyas. You have to let them dry out in between watering and in case of that we'll just err on the side of caution and just let them dry one or two extra days. It's never, it's never going to hurt them. They are all very drought tolerant. In terms of temperatures, I mean these are ideal plants for most of the United States. I mean you, you can't uh, grow them outdoors when it's really cold. Uh, once your temperatures are below 45 degrees uh, or like 7 or 8 degrees Celsius, uh, 45 Fahrenheit, they really should go inside. You have a few exceptions, Intermedia, Lodigesii, those will take uh, temperatures close to freezing. Uh, but basically, I mean for South Florida these, these guys are perfect. The one uh, species that you have to be very careful with is Violacea because that one is extremely intolerant of cold conditions. So for me, if the temperatures drop below 55 at night, that is like 13 Celsius, they go inside the house because I'm concerned uh, it might damage the plant. Uh, so watering, I cover that. So light, I mean, uh, very good light, bright light is good. Some, some uh, species will take full sun. This is again a general considerations on cattleya growing. If you, wanna, if you have a specific question on specific species, I may have a video covering that, so I refer to those. Uh, most of you probably grow hybrids. The hybrids are a lot more tolerant of varying conditions, so they're probably going to tolerate uh, a wider range of, of temperature and lights. For hybrids, I would say bright light is, is the ideal uh, thing. Uh, in general, your leaves should not be too dark. If they are too dark, the plant probably does not have enough light. If it doesn't bloom, it doesn't have enough light, that's almost a certainty. And then if your leaves are reddish, they probably have too much light. Or they, they have a sunburn, then, then it's uh, uh, time for a drastic change of location, because that's, that's a big no-no, obviously. So that you have to really adjust and, and, and observe your plant and maybe uh, change your location if, if you don't have the desired result. Uh, I would say the summer time is never the right time to make changes because in the summer the sun is at the harshest, is the strongest. So increasing light in the summer is a very dangerous thing to do. The right time to make changes in the winter when everything is a lot softer, the sun is not as harsh and so you can gradually uh, uh, make the plant grow used to a, a higher light uh, exposure. Fertilizing, cattleya is middle of the road in terms of fertilizing, so it's not a super hungry plant but it obviously benefits from fertilization. So the weekly, weekly, so that's the English uh, rhyme, it probably doesn't work in other languages, but weekly, every week and weekly, uh, so the weak dose, so typically at the most half the dose that's recommended uh, on the package. Uh, that's usually what, 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 you, what you should be doing in the winter uh, when the temperatures are low and the plant is obviously not growing, just don't fertilize it, it doesn't need it. Uh, in general, uh, also if your plant, I, I mentioned you have a, a floppy leaf, it means it doesn't have enough water, uh, you shouldn't start watering constantly because it's just going to rot. So you just know that you have to increase the watering, but to do it gradually. And uh, what else should I cover? I think, uh, yeah, potting. So the, I think that's the last one that, that's really important. All cattleyas should be potted really when they start growing new roots. Uh, but the biggies really, the bifoliate species, those are extremely intolerant of potting at the wrong time. So. Typically, you, want to, you will repot a bifoliate cattleya just when you have new roots starting to grow. You cannot damage those roots because remember, uh, only the new leaves will generate blooms and only those leaves are going to bloom. So the other back bulbs are there to sustain the growth of the plant, but you really uh, have to be very careful with these new roots. But the fact that it starts growing new roots indicates that the plant is going to be able to establish itself whenever you repot. You, you, you change the environment, it's stressful for the plant. So these new roots are going to be there to allow the plant to establish itself very quickly. 
Now I, for one, I like to mount my plants. I mean, the Cattleyas, I would say 50-50 are padded. The other uh, half is, is mounted. Uh, the Walkeriana here gets watered basically every day. Uh, in the winter, sometimes, if it's really cold, it's not going to be the case. But uh, uh, So mounted plants require a lot more watering. But you don't have to repot them, so you eliminate that big a caveat in, in, in your growing cycle uh, and uh, I mean so you don't so you don't have to repot so that's uh, that's really the, uh, the the big plus of, of not having of, of mounting your plants I think I lost track of uh, my, my train of thoughts but anyway I think you got the message so uh, that's it basically for cattleyas again these are general considerations this is a very large group but overall, uh, they grow the same way. Some might be colder growers in other genera, so you just have to research that. And uh, I thank you for joining me. I wish you a good day, and I'll, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.